Well, I thought because the world is thinking of mothers particularly today, that I perhaps had better think of a theme like this, because I think it was Spurgeon that said that if people are thinking about something, help them to think correctly, even if it happens to be a pagan feast day like some of the uh, pseudo-ecclesiastical calendar days and that that we have. <clears throat> but I think it's a wonderful thing for us to be able to come and contemplate the family. And I thought that today we would look at two faithful mothers in the scriptures <clears throat> because they really stand out here in Second Timothy. These two women that were mentioned in our reading <clears throat> where it speaks of Lois and Eunice in Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. And, and so I thought that we'd focus in on these two and the family circumstances which produced young Timothy. <clears throat> because sometimes we have idealistic views of family and family life and so on. Uh, but those of us that have been in families and are in families, we know that that is so often just uh, Hollywood decoration. It's not actually the reality of it that certainly it is not easy. <clears throat> and so therefore, I think it's an encouragement when we have a look at biblical examples to see, well, it was difficult. It must have been difficult for them. And yet God did bless them. And, uh, and so it is so important, I think. I mean, I remember when debating years in high school, one of the favourite topics for debate was the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world, you see. And so even back then in our fresh-faced adolescent days, we were trying to grapple with that particular situation. And we look in the scriptures, of course, there are so many wonderful examples of good women in the scriptures. <clears throat> think of Jochebed and Hannah and, and uh, we think of Elizabeth and uh, Monica and we think, of course, of Mary as well. And truly, God has blessed uh, women and mothers in the scriptures very clearly in their crucial roles that they seek to serve him. So let's have a look then at Lois and Eunice, shall we? We're just going to look at them under three headings. Firstly, the family circumstances and see what we can learn from those. And then we will see examples of their faithful care with young Timothy, and then finally, or thirdly, we'll see the final compensation for them. And so it can be really encouragement. So when we come first to think of the family circumstances, <clears throat> well, the very names Lois and Eunice, there uh, many Greek and Latin names were used by the Jews at the time, and um, Eunice is an unusual name. It, actually, the equivalent is Victoria, which is quite uh, interesting. Uh, and uh, some have suggested one of the church fathers, Origen, Oregon, who was a real heretic, but um, uh, he suggested that they actually could have been relatives of Paul. But that's probably in his imagination. There is no manuscript evidence for that. But there was obviously a very loving connection between them and the apostle. And they came, of course, from Lystra. Now, in their family circumstance, you say, well, where did they live? Well, they lived at Lystra. And we meet that in Acts chapter 16 and verse 1. And it was a really pagan city. Idols everywhere. There was no synagogue there at Lystra. And so it was not a particularly uh, God-influenced city in the right sense of the word. And so, firstly, where they lived in their family circumstances was not actually conducive to a uh, common family set of godly circumstances. And furthermore, when you look at the marriage, and you look at it from Acts 16 particularly, it was a mixed marriage. <clears throat> And, uh, and uh, of course, Timothy's father was a Greek. And we see that there. And, uh, well, was he an unbeliever? We don't really know. But Timothy, of course, was not circumcised. Uh, you see that from Acts 16, verse 3, where Paul 
had Timothy uh, circumcised. Now, of course, uh, some people that have criticized Paul for doing that because, you know, you, you'd be, you'd be, Paul said in one of his letters, if you're circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. But you've got to take the context. Uh, Timothy had to, was going to go with Paul into the temple and, uh, and other places and so on. And so in order to avoid offence, that had to be carried out. And yet while young Timothy was growing up, it would have been a, a constant reminder, even as his mother bathed him, that he was not a covenant child in the Hebrew sense of the word at that time. That could have been a great sadness to her because of her husband. <clears throat> and yet it seems as though it doubled her diligence. Instead of being a discouragement to her, the very fact that Timothy was such was still doubled her diligence for this young baby of hers. And then actually others too speculate that maybe ultimately too as he grew up and that, that they became widows, both Lois and Eunice. And, and that of course brings its problems. We have the issues today with working people or single parents and so on. And, uh, and the family is really in a, in a difficult way today uh, with the pressures that there are in life. But we'll concentrate on this today. I won't give a lecture about that. But, uh, but it would not... It, the thing that is encouraging to us is if you've got problems, they had problems. They had difficulties which they constantly had to face. If they were widows, well, they certainly didn't have anything from Centrelink or anywhere. There was no widow's support in that sense. Sometimes, of course, the church, as we see in Acts 6 with the creation of the diaconate, that the diaconate was created to help widows and so on. Uh, but it would have been probably quite a difficult time for them. But the main thing we see with the family circumstances, yes, it's difficult where they lived. Their own personal natural circumstances could have been quite quite uh, inimical against their, their, uh, their situation and making life very hard. But the wonderful thing about them was that they were godly, that they truly were god for And that is the best, best start for a family. And that is why, of course, it is so important when young people come to marry and to pray about a, a life's partner. Number one on the list is... If they are believers, then they better be marrying a believer. There's no question, no alternative to that. Yes, we know, I've heard the excuses, I've been in the ministry a long time, and I've heard the excuse, oh, but, you know, we'll pray for them and we'll do this and God can change their hearts and so on. Well, the Bible is pretty clear about that. We should be looking for a godly partner. And, uh, and so we can see here that they were both godly. Calvin has a lovely little comment here. He says, women are, as it were, canonized here. God puts them in his register and sets them in an honorable degree. I thought that's lovely and quaint, the way Calvin put that there. And that this is the most wonderful part of their family circumstances. Not the house in which they lived, not all the circumstances physical that surrounded them and so on, no. But they were sought to live godly for the Lord. And this is, of course, why then, when uh, Paul came to, uh, to Lystra there, there, where they had such a rep reputation and such a, they gravitated towards the Apostle Paul. And so therefore their family circumstances on the one hand were not particularly ideal except in this one situation where they were both God-fearers. And so therefore we can see as we go through the passage we can see sort of elements in the way that they faithfully cared for young Timothy. <clears throat> and as uh, one commentator said, that their piety, were the, the, the piety that went into young Timothy with his mother's milk 
And that piety passes into the blood, which I thought is quite a, a quaint phrase when you think of it. But whatever it was, they started early. And I'll tell you why <clears throat> we know that from the scriptures. In, uh, we had read chapter 3 and verse 15. <clears throat> Pardon me, it says that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. And uh, that word, that child there, is a brephos, which is almost like a newborn, a fetus. It's a very, very young, there are several Greek words for child, and that's one of the youngest ones. And so from a child, from an infant out of the womb, you have known the Holy Scriptures. And so it is so wonderful, isn't it, when we think of this. Uh, and this has happened sometimes with people. <clears throat> now, sometimes even people, we may have a couple of theological uh, queries with some people and so on, but I always remember I heard Corrie ten Boom speak uh, when I was at Sydney University, and that's a long t time ago. But Corrie ten Boom, and I quoted this from her, her book, she said, The Lord Jesus was a living reality to me. When I was very young, my mother told me how dearly he loved children and that he wanted to live in their hearts. And I must have asked him to come in, though I don't know how or when. She could never remember a time when she did not love the Lord Jesus Christ and seek for him. And now I know that sometimes we have theological questions about asking Jesus into your heart, but that's what she said. And uh, the Bible does say, my son, give me thine heart. So therefore, it can start early. <clears throat> and sometimes with people as they grow up, as they've sought to love Christ and follow him, and then they get worried that they didn't have a day of dramatic conversion. I did, but my first wife didn't. And sometimes it troubled her. And, <clears throat> and of course, uh, that was early in the piece. But of course, it was just a, a situation where I was able to say, well, are you a Christian? And of course she is, was, <clears throat> and she's with the Lord now. Praise God for, for that for her. Uh, though uh, we have situations where we miss our loved ones. But the, um, the situation is that when God truly does that work as a child, it is such a wonderful thing to see that. So don't worry if you're one of those who can't remember an exact date and so on. The main thing is, are you in Christ now? Is he your Lord and Saviour now? Do you seek to live for him right now? That you know that truly if he comes again that you will see him and that you will love him and welcome him. And so therefore that's the important test uh, but with Timothy, it was a biblical faith right from the beginning. Thou hast known from a child the Holy Scriptures. And that's what we teach our children, the Scriptures. That's what we do. And uh, my children, when they were growing up, I had a Bible, uh, ABC book, which went through ABC, through Bible texts with little commentaries. And every night we'd read one together and we'd sit on the bed and read one and so on. So get into their minds the scriptures. And uh, that's just such a, a blessing when you see that. And of course now some of, a couple of my kids are grandparents themselves now. And so <clears throat> it is so important for us to see that a biblical faith is implanted. And, but not only that, <clears throat> because it is also what's called an exemplary faith. It's a faith which is lived out by example. That yes, that as far as parents are concerned, it's essential to teach, but they've got to see it in us too. We've got to see it in our daily action and the way we conduct our lives. And uh, that, of course, with, with uh, Lois and Eunice was so true. They, they had such a reputation and Paul knew about them. And he really, uh, I mean, who was somebody, one of the commentators suggested they were those that washed their, the, Paul's wounds from being stoned. It could have been their home that took him in. And so they, Lois and Eunice, would have been wonderful examples. 
And also, the faith too, there's something else that we notice about it too. I think it's in verse 5, if I'll just check it here. Yes, in verse 5 in chapter 1, when it says, I call to remembrance the unfeigned, it says here in the AV, that is in thee, the unfeigned faith that is in thee, and that's Timothy, uh, that was in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And that word there, unfeigned, uh, I'll, I'll give you the Greek word, not to show, I've forgotten all my Greek, but you know, I write it down so I try and remember it that way. But uh, you'll, you'll hear it, it's anhypocrites. And of course we all know what the word hypocrite is, don't we? So anhypocrites is without hypocrisy. And that's why it's called unfeigned here in the AV. I can't remember whether the New King James says something different or whatever. But it was absolutely genuine. And isn't it wonderful to have a genuine... If you visit, you know, Singapore and you walk down, ta ta go to Tanglin or walk down Orchard Road or somewhere, and they come up to you and you say, do you want to buy a fake watch? You know, a Rolex or something or other of this kind. Uh, a lot of people deal in fakes all
away with so much that the world is trying to pour into them. We are in a perilous situation in this world with the invasion of technology. And I don't despise technology, I use it. But it must be our servant, not our master. And I'm afraid the world is mastered by our technology. And it's taking away that time from our relationships with our loved ones, our parents and our peers. And then, of course, that trust that must always be your children must be able to completely trust you and you them. I always remember teaching my children, <coughs> said, never be afraid to tell me the truth as to what you've done. You will never get into trouble for telling me the truth, no matter how terrible. But you'll certainly get into trouble if you lie. And that paid off in adolescence with certain situations that happened in school. I had to be able to depend 100% on the truth that my child was saying. And I was able to and the situation was resolved. <clears throat> but trust is so important. And of course, it's not empty, feely, feely. It's truth that is so vital. And so it's a loving faith that should be passed on, as no doubt Lois and Eunice did to young Timothy. And Timothy's tears showed to Paul how much he'd grown up and cared for the people of God. And so, having seen this then, their family circumstances and their faithful care, what was the final com uh, compensation? Because it is so wonderful. It, it, actually, when you think of the uh, examples that we have here, the Christian faith, we see it in the morning of life with Timothy, we see it at noontime with Eunice, and in the evening with the grandmother Lois. And so we see sort of three levels, and we, in our lives, we sort of pass through these levels in our lives. And so in this life, we can see with Timothy with Lois and Eunice, that they saw young Timothy grow up as a person and finally becoming a pastor, saved by grace, quickened by the Spirit. And we can see that with them it was all worth it. There was a final compensation for them in this life. Yeah, in spite of all the difficulties and so on. But of course, eventually with young Timothy, the parents would die, Paul would, but Timothy and his life lived on because his Bible was treasured in his heart and even though his friends might be taken away and his parents are taken away, that word that lived in his heart could not be taken away. And so we can see that final compensation, yes, for the parents ultimately in this life, but of course, how wonderful that in eternity they would see the result. They would see the result of their faithfulness as faithful mothers and a faithful family with young Timothy. And so... I don't know your family situation and circumstances. You may be on your own. You might not have any living relatives and so on. And that's a difficulty. And I hope and pray that the church family can be part of your family. <coughs> but there may be young Timothys here. Take a note of young Timothy here and the way that he's been blessed. It was not an ideal family circumstance in which he grew up. But God overruled it by his grace and uh, used his parents no matter what difficulties that there were there with a mixed marriage and the, the physical circumstances where they lived. Young Timothy, praise God, still came out for Christ, still honoured his mother's God and his grandmother's God. And so young Timothy here, I hope and pray that that'll be you. The young Timothy, or male and female, may it be you. Now mothers, like Eunice, persevere with it. 
Don't be put off. Yes, there are difficulties in this world. There's no doubt about that. There are difficulties. But be in it for the long haul and get the help of others around you. Maybe family like Eunice, the grandparents. I mean, it's sad today that sometimes grandparents are almost ersatz parents with respect to you know, the parents are so busy with work and all the rest of it and so on. But the, gra the grandparents too, if you're a grandparent, you still can with your prayers and support and example and your influence be a blessing to your fellow. It was lovely last night. We had a little family gathering uh, with my, my daughter of mine at West Pimble and uh, one of her daughters, a lovely, godly young woman, uh, so sweet, I, I must not digress, but I think she's so wonderful. Uh, but she's a trainee nurse, nearly finished, and we were talking, and I just, it brought such gladness to my heart as a grandfather to see how God had been so good because the mother had had difficulties, there were all sorts of difficulties and so on, it was not plain sailing, but God was gracious. And so be encouraged, persevere, remember this context here of these two faithful mothers. And may we pray for our families today, may we live for them, may we jealously guard the biblical concept of family life. And may we be an example to others that might be able to say to us, what is it that makes your family different? And you can tell them, Christ makes all the difference for what he has done for me and the way he has blessed our families. And I will help you with that. So may God bless you today and your families. And may we see a change in this godless, wicked generation that we might see a turning and a reviving and a rejecting of the evil and to restoring the biblical concept of the family in our needy generation. It's either that or chaos. May we see revival and blessing. Let's pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, how we long to see that blessing in our families today. And we do thank thee, our Heavenly Father, for the wonderful example of Eunice and Lois and young Timothy. And our Heavenly Father, we thank thee that the Scriptures are given to us for our learning, that with patience and comfort of the Scriptures we might have hope. So may we have, against all odds, may we have hope. May we have determination to persevere in Christ with our dear children, perhaps a wayward child, perhaps one that is giving us such heartache and fear Oh, God, our Father, help us to persevere and to lay hold on thee. And so, dear Father and God, be gracious to each one in this church and to those whom we love. And may truly this be the beginning of another day where we seek to live godly in our families in Christ. So we give thee thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen.